He wasn't listening. Hello there. Uh, my name's George Stobart. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Hey, O'Brien. Uh, can I help you? Have you heard of the Phantom? More than that. I've oh. seen it. And let me tell you, it's a dreadful spectre. So it's not just a local legend. There really is a Phantom of Loch Mar. Oh, no. I was talking about the Phantom of the Opera. Have you ever heard of the Knights Templar? I most certainly have. A remarkable institution. Did you know? They were the originators of our system of credit. Their financial empire stretched from the Atlantic to the Caspian Sea. With bases in so many countries, they had to establish new methods of fiscal transfer. So, the Knights Templar were nothing but a bunch of bankers. I don't get it. Are you saying these Templar guys invented bank charges? In a matter of speaking, I suppose they did. What a dirty trick. Didn't anyone try to stop them? Oh, yes. They were arrested, and many were burnt at the stake. Good. They bloody well deserved it if they were anything like my bank manager. What can you tell me about the castle, Mr. O'Brien? It's a fine sight now, isn't it? it? Dates back to the 10th century, you know. Most of the existing building was added much later, of course. Are the ruins open to the public? Oh, no, it's much too dangerous. Anyway, there's nothing of interest remaining. How can I get into the castle? Well, those walls were built specifically to stop people getting in, Mr. Stobart. But I dare say you'll find a way, if you've the will. Can you tell me about the tripod which was found in the castle? Now, there's a bone of contention and controversy. Oh. It was dug up by an Englishman of the archaeological persuasion. Who was this Englishman? Professor Pegram. The same man who dug up the gem. Do you know where I can find Pegram? You're too late to meet that fella. Is he dead? Not that. But he's gone from the village. A saw point with our esteemed host, I might add. Do you know where Pegram has gone? I'm sorry, but I don't. He hoped anchor in the dark and shipped out before the dark. Why did he do that? Who knows? A guilty conscience or a secret assignation. Whatever the reason, he'll not be missed in Lachmar. Maybe now the fuss about the gem has died down. We can get back to normal. What can you tell me about the gem which Pegram found? Now there's a gem which should never have been taken. A man would have to be full of greed to covet that stone. What's your interest in the jewel? You're not a reporter, are you? Oh no, thank the Lord for that. Why is Pegram's departure upset the landlord? He's lost a paying guest, that's why. More than that, there's the question of an unsettled bid. Poor Michael's seen red over the business, and I don't blame him. Can you tell me more about the landlord? Mick Leary? He's what you call a, a would-be sophisticate. The trouble is, his idea of sophistication extends as far as putting paper in the lavatory. I never worked out why he did that. It's much too dark in there to read. That's true. Have you ever run your hand over the back of the door? The graffiti is written in Braille. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Nope. I've never seen him before. Does this tool mean anything to you? I'd say it was for lifting manhole covers. Does this red nose suggest anything to you? No, it doesn't. No. What do you make of this tissue? I guess that muck on it is grease paint. I'd like to shake you by the hand, Mr. O'Brien. Oh, no, you don't. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? The design is Middle Eastern, I'd say. What can you tell me about this ID pass? Gruber Electronics. I've never heard of it. Goodbye for now. Hi, my name's Stobart, George Stobart. Hello there, mister. What can I do for you? Do you know Professor Pegram? Do I know him? Do I know the good professor himself? No, I don't. I mean, I know who he is, but I don't know him to talk to. Do you know anything about Pegram's excavation? Only that he didn't have the right tools for the job. What he needed was shovels and a JCB. 
Pegram was digging for historical remains, not coal. Is that a fact? What the hell for? It's the science of archaeology, Pat. Understanding how people used to live by what they've left behind. One day archaeologists might be digging up our remains. Imagine that, Mr. O'Brien. I wonder what they'll find. Well, it won't be arrowheads and beakers. Fast food cartons and favorite condoms, more likely. Did anyone from the village work at Pegram's Dig? I tried it myself, but that high and mighty history man called me incontinent. What a nerve. Hadn't I dug more holes than the rest of them put together? Can you tell me anything about the castle on the hill? Oh, I don't know much about anything. You should ask Mr. O'Brien here. He just joined up writing. Would you be one of them history fellows yourself? Oh no, I'm here on vacation. What's that? A vacation part. It's what the Americans call a holiday. Oh right. In Loch Marn? You come to Loch Marn for a holiday? Sure, it's a very pretty place. Where the hell are you from, mister? California. I know it. That's where the Bruins come from. <laughs> yeah, amongst other things. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? It's a handsome mug on that fella, to be sure. Is he a film star? What do you make of this tool? It's for lifting manhole covers. What does this false nose mean to you? Ah, uh, no, you're a clown. Does this tissue mean anything to you? No, boss. Does this security pass mean anything to you? Uh, mm, well, no. Do you recognize this matchbook? No. May I shake your hand? No, you can't. Well, how come? Because I'll spill me beer if you do. Bye for now. Top of the morning to you. I beg your pardon? Well, that's what you Irish say, isn't it? Do you want something? Or are you just flaunting your xenophobia? Well, I, I was trying to be sociable. <laughs> Is it a room you're after? That's not a bad idea. Do you have a vacancy? I could, if you don't mind waiting until the last guest checks out. No problem. When will that be? When the undertaker comes to collect him. Have you served any, uh, clowns recently? No. You're the first today. Do you know a man called Pegram? Indeed I do. Are you a friend of his, by any chance? Oh no. I'm just trying to track him down. Me too. That son of a bitch should be locked away. Did Pegram stay here? Yes, he did. Six nights plus breakfast. I'll try a glass of beer, please. Is this your first pint of real ale? Uh, well, I guess so. What's real ale, anyhow? Beer that's brewed from natural ingredients to traditional methods. It shouldn't be kept under pressure or refrigerated. And finally, it should have a good body and distinctive character. In other words, it's flat and worn with bits in, and it makes you fall over. <laughs> Do you recognize this man? No, I don't. What do you want with him? I've got a score to settle. I don't want any trouble in the bar, mister. If it's a fight you're looking for, see Father Mahoney. A priest? A man of the cloth? Sure. And he teaches the boys how to box at the youth club. According to Mahoney, it develops character. Isn't that right, Pat? Didn't he teach you all the art of pugilism? Doyle. Sorry, Michael. I was miles away. What did you say? Ah, uh, never mind. Here's something which might interest you. It doesn't. Does this false nose mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Does this tissue mean anything to you? That's disgusting. Uh-huh. I found it in the sewers. Well, what's the idea of waving it around in my face? You're worse than old Ron. Put it away, man. Hey, bartender, 
Uh, landlord, if you don't mind. Sorry. Shake my hand, why don't you? Now, why should I do that? What have you got up your sleeve? Nothing. Come on, just shake my hand. Uh, not just now, mister. I have to be careful on account of the health restrictions. Oh, jeez. Do you recognize this matchbook? No, sir. Do you recognize the name on this card? No. Should I? Nah, it was a long oh. shot. Look, I gotta be going. No. No. It was a beer-stained piece of toweling. My name's George. Pleased to meet you, mister. My name's Fitzgerald. What can you tell me about the castle? There's nothing there. Just an old ruin. How old? I really couldn't tell you. Have you ever explored the castle yourself? I used to play there sometimes, when I was a kid. Then one of the little ones fell off the wall, broke his head and died. We didn't go there anymore. You haven't been up there recently? No. Do you know Professor Pegram? He's the archaeologist, isn't he? That's right. Did you work at Professor Pegram's dig? <laughs> what gave you that idea? Can I get you another drink? Oh, no thank you. I shouldn't be drinking at all. I'm on tablets of my nerves. It's more than a pint and I'll pass out. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I'm sure I don't know him. What do you think this tool is used for? Uh, something to do with horses? Wrong. It's for opening manhole covers. Oh, really? Well, you learn something every day. What does this red nose suggest to you? Blood. Why is that? I used to bleed a lot when I was a kid. Every time there was a playground scrap, I'd end up with a bloody nose. I wouldn't have minded, but I wasn't even involved in the scraps. What does this tissue suggest to you? Nothing. Check out this pass. Thomas Merlin? No, never heard of him. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? No. Ever seen this towel before? Doesn't it belong on the bar? Very observant, Fitzgerald. Shake my hand. It's a trick, isn't it? Damn it, you're right. I can't seem to fool anyone. See you later. Hi there, old timer. What? No. No. Nasty cold you've got there. As soon as the words left my lips, I regretted them. Is there such a thing as a cold which isn't nasty? I put the question to Father Mahoney. Father, says I, why were we born to suffer snot? What did he say? He said, it's my reward for being out all night like a sinner. Pious prig. Anyway. This is no ordinary cold. It is the hay fever. Polynosis? Thank you. You're not a policeman, are you? Excuse me? Police? No. I'd know it if you were. Can I buy you a beer? Very kind, I'm sure. But I don't drink the stuff Leary sells. What's wrong with it? I've seen what it can do. Can you tell me how to get into the castle? Don't even think about it, me bucko. Lockbarn Castle is haunted. That's what the kid outside told me, but I don't believe it. Then you're a fool. Ghosts don't bother me. I still want to visit that castle. You can't. It's not open to the public. There's no one around to stop me, is there? That's right. Nothing human, anyhow. Have you ever seen the ghost? To be sure. With me very own eyes. Can you describe the ghost? It was horrible. A wee stunted beast. Long beak, straggly, flappy wings. Are you sure it wasn't a wild animal? A rabbit or a skunk or something? Skunk? In Loch Marl? That'll be the day. No, that was a ghost to be sure. 
I think I know what you saw on the castle wall. I know what I saw. I don't think so. It was the kid, McGuire. What? He was up on the wall last Tuesday night. He thought you were the Phantom of Lochmar. Oh! Do you know Pegram, the archaeologist? That's the scrawny fellow who was poking around at the castle, isn't it? No, I don't know him. What's that you're making? It's a necklace, me poco. Oh, sure. Made out of steel wire? <laughs> That's right. A necklace for my pretty one. When my little lover feels it round her slender neck, she'll be mine. All mine. <laughs> Do you recognize the man in this photograph? I can't tell without my glasses. Can you identify this tool? No. What does this red nose mean to you? Nothing. You could make use of this tissue. Never use them. Those things are unhygienic. Take a look at this ID card. I don't know anything about it. What does this matchbook mean to you? Nothing. Go away and stop bothering me. Could you use this towel? I could, but it wouldn't be much use for anything else. Hey, would you like to shake my... Uh, no, on second thought, forget it. I'll see you later. Hey, McGuire. What? Do you know anything about Pegram's dig? He wouldn't let me anywhere near it. I offered to help, but he chased me off. I didn't want to see his smelly old hole anyhow. Did anyone from the village work at the dig? Pegram bought some students and bums with him. He reckoned no one in Loch Marn would know what to look for. The only local guy who worked for him was Sean Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald says he's never been anywhere near the dig. He's having you on, mister. What do you make of this, kid? Hey, that's one of Leary's towels. He'll skin you alive. That old windbag doesn't scare me. Anyhow, I'm only borrowing it. You're pretty cool, mister. For an old guy. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. I tugged at the trap door, but it was locked from the inside. Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien. Hello there. What now? Do you know Sean Fitzgerald? Yes, I do. What you want with him? I want to talk to him about working at the dig. What makes you think he did? The boy outside told me. I can't imagine anyone implying Sean Fitzgerald on a dick. He wouldn't know a post hole from his elbow. Does this towel mean anything to you? Sure. It's one of Leary's towels. Are you planning on stealing it? Just borrowing it, if you must know. Goodbye for now. Hey. Hello there again, mister. Do you remember seeing Sean Fitzgerald at the dig? Hmm. Let me see now. I think me brain box needs a spot of lubrication. Can I buy you a drink? You most certainly can. Give me a drink for my friend here. Who? Doyle? Has he conned you into buying for him? Shame on you, Patrick. Same again. Just a point this time, Michael. One point of round coming up. Do you remember Sean Fitzgerald now? I can picture the scene as if it was only last week. Come to think of it, it was only last week. Fitzgerald was there all right. Him and a bunch of students. He was speaking with the boss man. What do you think of this towel? No, there's a fine piece of cloth if ever I did see one. Such craft must surely come from linen cupboards or the Vatican itself. Bye for now.
Hello again. What? I'm looking for Sean Fitzgerald. Have you seen him? Never heard of him. Don't you come from around here? None of your business. I didn't ask where you come from, did I? I'm from California. That's your problem. Did you ever see Fitzgerald at Pegram's Dig? I never heard of either of them. If I was a woman, I wouldn't think much of a wire necklace. It's not made for a woman. I've got my sights on tastier dishes than women. Flesh as smooth and tender as a maiden's. Bones as soft and white as a newborn babe's. Rabbit, that. That's what gets my juices flowing. <laughs> I'll see you later. Mr. Fitzgerald? Doyle told me you definitely worked at the dig. He's seen you there. You might as well admit it. I knew this would happen. I knew I'd get caught. I need to talk to Professor Pegram, if he's still alive. What do you mean? Is he in danger? Yeah. You too, if I'm right. You're not from the Social Security. Hell no. What makes you think that? Well, uh, I was claiming benefits at the same time I was working for Pegram. I'm not in a position to make judgments, Sean. That's between you and your conscience. All I want is to talk to Pegram about the gem. But he's not here! I know that. But he left that package with you, didn't he? So where did Pegram go? I don't know. I swear it. He came to see me early this morning. Said he was leaving. He asked me to give this package to a guy called Marque. Show me what's in the package, Sean. I can't do that. Why not? I promised the professor. So what? You didn't have any qualms about your benefit scam. So where's the harm in taking a peek inside Pegram's package? You don't know these people. I can't. I don't dare. This is your last chance to show me the package, Fitzgerald. I've been patient with you, but now it's time to kick ass. But he'll kill me. Who will? The man from Paris. Jack Marquet. Pegram told me if I gave him the package unopened, I'd hear no more about it. But if I double-crossed Marquet, I'd be dead. I'll deal with Jacques Marquet. Give the package to me. No. Why should I trust you? I don't know who to trust anymore. I wish I'd never even heard of the Lockmarn gem. Hey, I've just seen a big red. Get out of here, Maguire. Come back when you're old enough. What's the lad howling about? A big red sports car. Sean Fitzgerald's been run over. Get out! Noisy little tyke. Maybe you should send out some medicinal brandy, Michael. Oh, yes. And who's going to pay for it? Not me. Me too, neither. As soon as the old guy looked away, I grabbed his piece. I was telling the truth about Fitzy, mister. Okay, okay, calm down. Now tell me what happened. I was standing here, minding me own business, when I saw this beautiful red sports car coming up over the hill. Would you look at that, says I. And I going over to take a closer look. Next thing, Fitzy comes tearing out of the pub and nearly knocks me on the ass. But the car just flies at him. It was too fast for poor old Fitzy. And hit him an awful wallop. He goes flying up on top. Jesus, says I. I thought he was a goner. Next thing, the driver hops out. And I couldn't believe my eyes. He was dressed like a bloody pixie.
I pushed the switch down, but in doing so it snapped off in my hand. I tugged at the trapdoor, but it was locked from the inside. Hi, do you speak English? Well, no. Uh, what if I was to say no? An implication of cognizance shrouded in denial. A pretty poser of a paradox indeed. I gave him the look I'd perfected when I was 12 and was going to be the greatest hypnotist of all time. It was a killer. Are you attempting to hypnotize me, or is it the constipation you're suffering? I was a little out of practice. What can you tell me about the castle? Not much, I'm sorry to say. Most of its history is long forgotten. Ah, but if these old stones could only speak, what stories they'd tell. Stories to make your toes curl and your blood run cold. You know, this castle is said to be over 600 years old. Have you seen Professor Pegram? No, he's packed up and gone. Do you happen to know where? Back in England, I suppose. Did you happen to see a red sports car down on the road? I caught a glimpse of a flash of red on the hill and heard the racket. Sure, it was an awful noise. A sports car, you say? A Ferrari, to be exact. A racing car? And what was it doing here? The poor fella must have been lost. The driver of the Ferrari was involved in an accident. Is that so? Yeah. He knocked somebody down outside the bar. What an idiot! How could a thing like that happen? He was traveling too fast. So fast, he ran right under the car? I mean, the car was traveling too fast. But you'd have thought the idiot could have heard it coming. Maybe you know the guy who was hit by the Ferrari. His name is Sean Fitzgerald. Oh, I know him all right. That's me nephew, the idiot responsible for the stacking of my hay cart. Was he killed by the car? Oh, no. But he has been abducted. Well, that's a relief now. Aren't you going to look for your nephew? What for? From what you say, it's too late. Well, you could report the matter to the police. Better not. Besides, what could they do? Well, they could mount a search. They have only the one bicycle between them. In a question of superior acceleration, I put me money on the Ferrari. I think you ought to know exactly what Sean has gotten himself into. I'm not sure I want to know. But you're his uncle. His own flesh and blood. You're right, but what can I do? If I'm not here to guard it, some idiot might try to climb the haystack. What a moral dilemma. Stay here and guard this potentially lethal agricultural construction. Or to go off in search of the prodigal nephew, the very man responsible for said hazard. It'll need some thinking about. Why, there's no problem. You're right. Why didn't I think of it before? We'll demolish the haystack. You don't have to demolish the haystack to go look for Sean. I'll stay here in your place and warn anyone who's silly enough to climb it. Marvelous! I think I should start me inquiries in the bar. He strode off in the direction of McDevitt's bar, leaving me to contemplate the stack of hay. The stack of hay stopped, short of the top of the wall. Even if I stretched as far as I could, the wall was out of reach. What I needed was a slice or two of Alice's Wonderland. Pushing with all my strength got me nowhere. They didn't budge. I really need to start working out. 